All right, welcome everyone. My name is Ben. Um, we're gonna let people start to, to filter in um, before we officially get started. Thanks to those of you who were in the waiting room for a couple minutes before we um, kicked off here. I'm an Environmental Innovation Fellow here at Yale, uh, working at the Sci Center for Innovative Thinking, as well as the Center for Business and Environment at Yale. I'm really excited for, for this event um, about working together to change the world remotely. As people start to filter in, I just want to give you kind of a sense of the, the history of the, the event uh, as it developed, because I think that that it actually exemplifies some of the things that are going to be discussed here and then that we'll, we'll chat about in, in this session. Um, we had planned on doing a, a series on um, including various groups in technology and sustainability and, and that intersection between the new digital uh, and technological tools that we have and, and solving really important crises and problems like environmental challenges. Uh, so Diedrich, who's, who's going to be one of our panelists today, was part of that session. And um, we had had him scheduled to come to New Haven in person. Um, given the, the change to the state of the world with COVID-19 and, and the, the novel coronavirus, uh, we had to switch to a remote session. Um, and you know, given, given Diedrich's work, with using digital tools to get dispersed groups to, collab to collaborate across geographic boundaries, uh, it made a lot of sense to, to shift the focus of the event to that particular challenge. Uh, and so we, we invited a couple other folks, Martine and, and Bonnie, who are also working on a similar challenge to, to join the, the conversation as well. Uh, and so I want to give a shout out to a student who's been helping to organize this event since the beginning, Lawrence Early, who's uh, here on the call, uh, was the one who initially connected um, Diedrich and, and helped get the, the, the change and pivot in the event together. Um, so it looks like we've got a, a, good, a good group here joining us. Um, before we, we get started into the event, I just want, want to give you all a sense of, of what to expect. Um, we're going to let each of the panelists introduce themselves. They'll share a little bit about some of the, the work that they're, that they're doing and um, can have, have the chance to, to talk about um, how they work to, to tackle um, really complex and, and gritty challenges with teams that may not be in the same physical location. Uh, then we'll have some conversation with the panelists that I'll moderate. Um, just giving them some questions on, on how they, they manage this particular challenge. Uh, and then after that, we're going to break out into some discussion groups and, and make this participatory. So I hope you're all um, game for that. Uh, I think that you, you've all probably been in a lot of Zoom calls and uh, a lot of, you know, um, things where, where you hear faces on a screen talking about something. But what we're talking about here today is how do you go beyond faces on a screen and start to build more partnerships and connections? And so, you know, we don't expect to come out, we don't expect you to come out of this event, you know, reared up and, and ready to just dive in immediately to a global challenge. Though if you are, we've got ways for you to do that. Um, but we do want you to sort of get a feel for, for what that process looks like um, beyond just the, the very abstract faces on a screen. So we're gonna get you talking to each other in small groups. So, so be prepared for that in the second half of the session. And then we'll come back from those breakout groups and, and talk a little bit about what, what that experience was, was like. Um, so I'm gonna turn it over to our, our, our panelists to, to introduce themselves um, one by one. Um, starting with uh, Diedrich Strom, who's the CEO of Young Sustainable Bill Impact. So, so Diedrich, I'm going to turn it over to you. And um, do you have slides that you, you're going to share? Or are you going to just uh, yeah, speak I thought to I'll them? Yeah, I thought I was going to slides. OK. Amy, can you make Diedrich a, a co-host so he can share slides? Uh, I can already share. Oh, you can slide. OK, you're yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. All right, then I'll turn it over to you. Take it away, Diedrich. All right, thank you. Um, I have 10 minutes, right? Yes. Cool. Uh, yeah, my name is Diedrich. I'm 26 years old from Norway. I've been working with uh, entrepreneurship for the last seven years. Uh, it's been the thing that I've, has been driving me and especially focusing on sustainability. Um, 
I think uh, Lawrence here as well, who's been helping with the event, has been our one of our participants uh, back in uh, 2018. So that's awesome. And I was supposed to be in uh, Chicago, uh, San Francisco, and in uh, New York uh, in uh, the end of March. And I was supposed to come home yesterday, uh, but uh, obviously I never, I never left my room. So this is my fifth, starting sixth week now uh, inside of my room. So I'm happy to talk to you online at least. Um, what I'm thinking of doing now is that I'm, I'm not going to start a discussion like which uh, framework should you use? Should you use design thinking? Should you use lean? Uh, you do whatever you like doing there. Uh, what I'm going to try to empathize is how do you do, you know, make sure that you plan well with your team to make sure that you can meet up at the, the, the right times. How can you do complex problem solving uh, remotely? Um, and also, uh, which, how do you communicate in general? Um, and try to show you some of this uh, stuff. Um, and I hope that you haven't used at least everything so that you get something new out of it. But yeah, let me quickly share my screen here. You guys see uh, everything? Cool. Yeah, uh, complex processes online. Uh, I'm going to try to show you at least uh, three good advices on this. So just to quickly explain what YSI is, uh, we've been running a five month innovation program for the past three years. It's uh, very different because everyone in the world can apply and four and a half months is online and people apply as individuals. So we basically help people through the stages of becoming a team, uh, understanding a problem, coming up with an ID, testing it, and then getting it out to the world. Uh, and then they come to also for two weeks. So that's how I, I know Lawrence as well. Uh, but right now we're building a platform to be able to facilitate this digital process for millions instead of just a uh, uh, you know, couple of dozens every year. So this is how our a typical program can look like in terms of participants. We have people from the US, Mexico, uh, South America, Africa, Asia, even Australia. So all continents basically is, is part, uh, funny enough, not the Nordics, even though like we, I'm from Norway and I, you were supposed, we were you know, thinking that maybe at least someone would be from the Nordics, but that never happens. Uh, so the global talent is everywhere. Um, we've been running this program um, for three times in the global, but we've also been running it with uh, in Bangladesh, Southeast Asia, and Singapore, as well as China. Um, so we've been in total 10 five-month innovation programs. And all of these teams are distributed. They work, you know, remotely. And this is what we've been trying to figure out. How do we do this? Obviously, I've been getting a lot of, um, been talking to a lot of experts about this who's been advising me against this. Uh, but now that everyone has to work remotely, I think we're, we're back on uh, for remote work and creating of stuff. I just want to mention before you start looking at any tools, like everything that we've been learning is that it's all about the team. Like it doesn't matter what tools you're using. If you're just, uh, if you don't have the team stuff in order, that's not going to work either way. So you have team alignment, you know, team roles, that the communication is good, commitment from the team members, uh, that the skills are there for the whatever project that you're doing. Uh, and did I mention team? Uh, because team, like, before anything, make sure your team is good. And now, so one of the biggest issues that we've been working on is how do we get these uh, entrepreneurs to sort of create products and services from scratch by never meeting each other before four and a half months. Like it sounds stupid and sometimes it really is. And this is why we have to learn what do we use and how do we replicate it? And I like, it's just a commitment of going remote, which is sort of the starting point. And, you know, using working processes that allows the team to align uh, is incredibly important while everyone understands what the others are doing so there's no overlap in work and that people are you know moving fast forward when it comes to your strategy so using scrum um, i'm not sure how familiar everyone is with it but i'm guessing some of you are if you're not uh, please go and check out scrum um, you know online instead but it has a couple of things that allows a remote work team to function better because it uh, has a planning meeting on the monday uh, you do stand-ups, which is short 15-minute meetups to discuss progress, um, and you have, uh, uh, which you do every day. And then you have the sprint review so you can reflect upon the week and, uh, and you know, figure out what to do better next week. So it's perfect for alignment remotely. It gives you a certain time frames to meet up so that you ensure that 
flow of communication. And when it comes to complex, like part of what they do in our program to solve these complex problems in the world, focusing on sustainability, is uh, they have to try to do a lot of research and gathering that research into visual and very clear ways of looking at it is incredibly difficult if you're not using the right tools. So two of the tools that have been working really well, like so well that literally everyone is using it in our uh, programs, not because we tell them to, but because it's the best. So it's Miro and Mural, which I'll show you a little bit uh, at the end of my talk here. So Mural and Miro, and when it comes to scheduling, like trying to figure out when people have the time, especially if you have different time zones as well, which you have, you know, in the in the U.S., I'm guessing there's a my five hour overlap or something in east to west or something. Not not totally sure about the the American uh, time zones though. But so if you're trying to create meetings with people, especially if they're not in your organization, uh, I I like to use Calendly because I can just put up you know, every type of meeting that I'd like and send them a copy. And it's connected to my calendar so that everyone can always see when is my time available so that I don't have any overlaps. I can just send it out instead of using a lot of time to plan my meetings. Uh, the second is uh, if your team can share their calendar, it's probably the best way to schedule workshops, longer meetings and, and uh, the quick uh, standups, etc. So just making sure you have shared calendar. If you're doing workshops, let's say with a partner, somewhat, someone you don't have the shared calendar with, then when to meet is the simplest way. It's just send them a link. They'll tell you when they're uh, available during a week or two. And yeah, you'll see when people are un unavailable and when everyone is available. Last point, I guess, is communication. So um, a lot of people use Slack. I use Slack as well, uh, but this is something like if you're starting from, from scratch working remotely, I actually prefer, or I, I, I tell people to use Discord. And it's re really just one reason for that, and it's the voice rooms. So it's almost like Slack. It's mainly made for gamers, uh, but you have those voice rooms. So it's like being in the office. I can just be there, and if Ben jumps in, uh, Ben can say hi, and we can suddenly have a very like real life uh, replication uh, of, of how it would be in real life. So because of the voice room, but if you're familiar with Slack, I'll, I would just continue using Slack because it's about making people comfortable with the, with the tools as well. Um, Zoom, obviously, uh, I've been testing probably a dozen different, uh, different stuff. Uh, I use Whereby for one-to-one -one meetings, whereby.com, which is a Norwegian company. But other than that, I, I use Zoom for workshops, longer meetings, and everything in between. Uh, mainly because of the breakout rooms, which you guys will experience later if you haven't experienced it. And sometimes everything just cracks uh, open and Google Hangouts seems to be stable. I don't like Google Hangouts that much, but it's all about stability. And Google Hangouts seems to survive uh, most of it. And you can have more people than you can have on Whereby. Um, one of the things I would like you to try out if you have the time to have fun is, yeah, icebreakers, Kahoot, movie streaming, etc. But we made a board game for, start, for entrepreneurs where you can sort of try yourself out in different scenarios called startupboardgame.co. It's a very early stage. So as you'll see, the UI is not up to date and things are not perfect, but it is uh, pretty fun. Uh, you get to test yourself in different scenarios and you can have your team members with video and audio and playing the game. So that's a cool like get together, having fun online uh, for entrepreneurs specifically. And hope I have a couple of minutes more. I'll just quickly show you let me just, how some of the stuff works. So for example, one of the ways that we do uh, tracking and what we're going to do each week is we, we made this homemade uh, backlog uh, stuff where we can size it. Uh, this is like based on the Scrum uh, framework, but we choose which sprint we're in. Um, we take different tasks in platform, building, community, external relations. Uh, in total, all of that, those points basically becomes um, an estimation of the points there. So for example, uh, sprint 20, we have 86 points and we have to cross them off. And as you see, we've been doing a lot of good sprints lately and this is all, all online basically. So we're actually working more effectively remotely. 
Uh, another thing we do is we track how people feel in their role and if people feel like we're living after our core values. So every week we have to give a sort of update, like do we feel like we're living after our core values, which is uh, togetherness, uh, driven by curiosity, develop self-awareness, um, and if we're feeling well in our role, uh, autonomy, mastery, and purpose. So that's good ways to sort of track, especially if you're getting uh, more and more people on board and onboarding people as well, to track if they're feeling good about their role and so on. Um, and when it comes to um, mural, it's like you're doing this complex sort of uh, work sessions and you're trying to you know, maintain control. Uh, so this is just really simple because if you're using, for example, any like lean canvas or any canvas at all, it should be inside here and you can just click, you know, a post-it note, uh, you can do a workshop and everyone in your team can be inside of this at the same time. And you can just, you know, quickly create whatever. Um, I like this for quick workshops. Uh, in, a, in a way, Myra works the same thing, like it's, it's com competitors, but for me, I use uh, Miro to track and keep track of our research, our findings. Uh, if we're doing important workshops that should post to stay there, like uh, uh, creating our target groups or, you know, figuring out, this is, for example, a, a um, timeline of the program, uh, which we're building into a, what do you call it? Um, like the digital platform. So we're trying to figure out basically how the flow works when people are creating their startup. So this is sort of how creating a startup looks like from our, our lenses. So this is all the modules that you'll go through in our program. And when we create, like when Lawrence went to our program, he would start here with team building. He'll, he'll slowly work his way up with his new team and go through all the stages, you know, all the canvases and everything. Um, but in the platform, we'll allow any entrepreneur in the world to start a program from anywhere in the process. So that was it from me. I hope I gave you some things to think about. You're muted, Ben. <clears throat> thank you. Um, thank you, Diedrich. Um, that's a, a, great, a great overview of some of the work you're doing and some, some tips to use. Uh, I have actually have a mural set up for when we break into discussions. It's kind of a, a class whiteboard for this group that I'll, that I'll share shortly. Um, uh, so, so keep an eye out for that. Um, but in the meantime, I'm going to turn it over to Martin Weinstein, um, who's been, who some of you may know because he's been a fellow associated with both Sci City and CBE. Um, and I'll turn it over to him to explain some of his current work. Thank you, Ben. Um, thanks for the invitation. Great to be here. Good to see you, Lawrence. It's been a while, um, and a lot of uh, nice, familiar faces in the in the virtual room. Thanks, Diedrich, for that. I really look forward to that mural session. Um, I love mind mapping. That's one of my one of the things that I that I really enjoy. And and but I haven't really done a a, a virtual kind of mind map with people around. So I look forward to that. Um, I have different hats. One of one of the main ones is I'm a resident fellow here at CBay. And, and, and my primary task is to run the Yale Open Innovation Lab, which is a, a program that I started a couple of years ago, um, also at Sci City. And one of the things about the Yale Open Lab is, it, and its design is to be able to bring in people to work together, multi-stakeholder partnerships, that's where kind of innovation, open innovation really comes in, but also leverage emerging digital technologies. And then both of those things, cater to planet level uh, open source projects. So before I, I dive into, I think one of the, one of the most relevant uh, projects that we're doing that, that relates to the topic of today, which I think it's the Open Climate Collabathon that we we're launching again next week. Um, I'll, I'll just explain a bit of um, how I find myself in, in the position of kind of researching how we work together uh, to solve grand challenges and, and where remote comes in. So, um, and most, most people that, that know me are aware that I, I do a lot of work around uh, blockchain and digital distributed ledger technologies. Well, around like five years ago, when I was um, doing my doctoral research, I did a lot of work on corporate uh, law and governance. And what I really got me excited about blockchain and distributed ledger technologies, or let's say smart contracts, 
is um, a function that's called DAOs, Decentralized Autonomous Organizations. So DAOs have, they're designed with functionality for people to gather around a specific project and have different levels from simple to complex governance and be able to, to, to do decision making with a digital lens, right? Being able to, uh, we can think of them as companies. Co corporations have extremely complex governance. Now at the, at the essence of where governance is important in, in, a, in a company level is deciding what to do with funds, right? With financial capital that the organization has. So DAOs bring in a lot of the, the tools from the financial technology side that come in from cryptocurrencies, but pack them in a way that uh, people can gather around uh, and work on something and being able to uh, not just build a, a project, but also manage the, um, the governance and the financial flow. I think at the, at the moment, the, the, where we're at with, with DAO technology still requires a bit more work for it to scale into big applications, but we see most of its uses in what well, we could also understand as collectives, people coming together to work on a project. One of the most important things that weaves people together to work um, on a ship project is a common purpose. It's what's the, what's the impact of the project. If it's purely around, um, uh, developing a firm or a startup, that's quite common, right? You know, founders meet each other and, and they develop a, a, a company. Um, but when it comes to specific purposes that might be either short sprints of work or longer term process, this is really the essence is, is people that maybe don't know each other, which is something that you would never start a startup with founders that you don't know, but in a collective you might. Um, so there's, um, that, that kind of helps a, a background to jump into around two years ago when one of, the, one of the projects that we were incubating at the Open Lab was around how do we manage all together, the seven and plus billion people in the world, our common a budget, which is a common account. The atmosphere and, and climate change really puts us in that, in that lens. And that led to a project called Open Climate, which is the proposal to develop a global climate accounting system. And there's a lot into the, that would go into a global climate accounting system. And fundamentally, there's a lot of digital technology implementations to that. So here's another important aspect around the vision for radically collaborative um, collectives that swarm around a common project and a common purpose is that ideally that, that project is um, open source, meaning it has a, a big part of it that is based on code. Um, but some other digital based solutions, right? There's, there's little things we can do. There's a lot of things we can do remotely and we definitely realize that now more than ever, uh, but there's some things we can't. So in the case of a global climate accounting system where we're bringing in, how does digital technology help us weave this? It's such an ambitious goal that, and, and, and a tool that fundamentally has to make everyone a stakeholder of that, um, fusing those ideas together, start cre started creating this, this vision of starting researching, how can we crowd develop a tool like that? And so that led also to the concept of taking another uh, piece of, um, of, a, of a model that we use to develop things together, which is a hackathon, right? But the hackathon, participants assemble in teams and compete against each other often more more often than not um and and they often are sprint periods so in the concept of the collabathon which is this concept we came up with on on creating a new form of uh, collaborative collaborative work around an open source project the difference is teams are assemble to work on pieces of the same puzzle so it's within the same project. So everything each team works should ideally help each other. The second thing is, as, as the word says, it's not, it's not a sprint so much like a hackathon where you have to build something within a weekend, for example. Why hack is, is the best example for that. Um, but it's more a marathon. You know, it, when it's a, an ambitious project, it might take months, it might take years, right? So how do you keep a team engaged throughout the process? The type of tools to manage that also um, have to evolve, right? We saw Diedrich showing the Trello with a Kanban board. Um, 
and and one things to to highlight around more interesting uh, tools when it comes to long-term project management is how can you assign funds to tasks in that Trello board so people that perhaps are not part of the core project can, can come in as freelancers and, and take up on a task from that project and do it and get rewarded for that. So how do we research new ways of financing these collectives? And, and that's kind of weaves back together to the concept of a DAO, how to, how to group of people that might not know each other uh, and because all of their interactions are digital, working on a common project that has a lot of intricacies and complexities of, a, of an open source code development roadmap, aligning on a common purpose, um, deal with having to deal with common, common funds. So that's essentially one of, some, of the, some of the key thesis questions behind the Collabathon. I, I tried to tackle um, most things that I, that I engaged with as a, as a research um, timeline, but in this case, it's a very much a real project. So we launched last year uh, with uh, Yale as one of the nodes, but um, called out to different universities around the world. So we got uh, last year around eight uh, nodes where participants assembled and they worked on different prompts and challenges that we put out. Around that time, one of the last notes we did was in, in Los Angeles, in California, and I met Bonnie, who's the other panelist. Now, Bonnie, and she will share uh, what she does in Code for America and Hack for LA, has been basically working in the civic tech group to have multiple teams working on, on civic open source projects. So uh, she, I obviously learned a lot from the, her vision, and I still learn every day because the code for all um, network around the world has been doing this for a while. And so there's a lot of lessons to be learned in that integration. And now we've been working together in the 2020 edition of the Collabathon. I wasn't planning on sharing any screen, but I'll, um, if I have a, a, just one, one more minute, what I'll do is I'll just go into to the website of the, of the project, show real quickly, just so that everyone has uh, a face to, to the project and its logic. And I'll point out to one key diagram as well. And then I, I will extend an invitation for everyone to participate in our launch uh, next week uh, in the context of Earth Day. So let me share my screen real quick. So we're here in the, in the website, the Collabathon. Um, it's collabathon.openclimate.earth. And this is a, the temporary banner uh, announcing the launch event for next week. We have eight days to go. Um, this just explains again what, what, I, what I mentioned that a key thing that, that people need to gather around is around a common mission. And in this case is developing a climate accounting system. Um, there's different, I, I basically, let me see, I wanna show this diagram, which explains the mechanism of the Collabathon. Similar to what YSI, which Diedrich uh, showed with people around the world, we, we call out to different nodes, which often are either universities or civic tech groups, but also startups, to, um, to announce the, the event and the process so that they bring in participants. Those participants assemble in teams. Those teams don't necessarily have to be part of those nodes around the world. In fact, one of the um, interesting things that happened last year is we had a team in Paris, in Berlin, in LA, at Yale, working together on a common prompt. So that's what teams do. They look at the prompts. This is the common project that everyone's working on, in this case, open climate, but it could be something else. And to, to digest a complex project, this, this one specifically has a framework around uh, five different buckets from world system registries, climate action certification, climate markets, et cetera. And we bring in prompt owners or prompt hosts that are subject domain experts to create the challenge at hand, which turns into a prompt. The prompt tells teams, here's the problem, here's what needs to be built. And sometimes that could be high level or it could be very specific. Those teams work on that and submit that. And now everyone can be working on an extremely complex project over time um, and, and achieve um 
uh, an, an open source um, development that has, um, let's see, let me, let me stop sharing. You will see in the home edition, um, a link to the general brief that you'll be able to read more. And then more than anything, just before I hand it over to Bonnie, Earth Day event is what we're launching next, um, next week. And we, similar to what, what we've been doing lately at, at Yale, running everything remotely, these are almost a virtual conference. And we'll have a lineup of amazing speakers, a lot of, uh, a lot of Yaleys as well. So I invite you to join. This is starting Wednesday onwards. Um, happy to take questions uh, afterwards. You're Thank you, yeah. Martin. I got it just as I was speaking. Um, uh, thanks for that, that overview of the, the um, Collabathon. I've been part of this initiative uh, since the first iteration in the fall and had the chance to speak to some folks about it at the United Nations Climate Conference. And so it was really exciting to see that from conversations happening on campus at Yale to uh, information that was shared with the global community working to address climate change. Um, I'm going to now turn it over to Bonnie to share some of the work that she, she's been doing. Uh, she's someone I've gotten to meet through the, the Collabathon process and very excited to have her with us here today. Thank you so much, Ben, and to the other panelists. I really enjoyed um, hearing Diedrich's, uh, you know, really in-depth tool uh, tour about how to make teams work successfully together. We use some of those same tools. Um, but our environment is um, intentionally a little more stripped down. So, um, so let me share my screen and, uh, and we'll get started. All right, I wanna present. Uh, okay, great. So this is part of a talk that um, I give as a Kanban evangelist. Um, for those of you who are familiar with Scrum and Kanban, um, this won't be new to you. For those of you who have not used it, um, what I can say about it is it's a workflow methodology um, designed to keep everybody focused on the work that's right in front of them um, instead of mired in the details um, while still making sure that you achieve, achieve your objectives. Um, there are lots of tools like Trello that have built-in Kanban methodologies, uh, GitHub, which is a software authoring um, uh, platform, um, also uses get, uh, project boards, which, are, uh, which have a Kanban methodology built in. And um, so I'm gonna kind of walk you through how we use this um, at hack for la to, to be successful. Um, and really the focus here for me in all of my work is maintaining viability and momentum in open source volunteer projects. Um, I am blessed to work with uh, over, um, I would say about 200 volunteers uh, since I started with the organization um, of variety of skill levels. And um, one of the nice things about working with volunteers, my past life was working as, a, as an entrepreneur. I was a serial tech entrepreneur um, and then a coach to lots of other companies that wanted to go public or have other liquidity events. Um, is that you can't, when you're not paying people, it really teaches you about what works and what doesn't work uh, because people vote with their feet. So it's a, it's a trial by fire of whatever methodology that you bring to the table. And I recommend if you haven't run any volunteer projects um, as part of your entrepreneurial work that you, that you do try to do that with other skilled volunteers because it will definitely put your principles to the test. Um, oops, one sec. Um, too far. Uh, so I am the executive director of Hack for LA, and I was the project manager on the website relaunch for this organization. Um, and I'm a curriculum developer and workflow process designer, software engineer, and entrepreneur. I'm gonna move this to another screen. Okay. So the challenge is with the volunteers coming in that they have a variety, and this is true again of employees as well. So they have a variety of uh, personal experience, professional experience, communication styles and motivations. Um, and it's really important that we create a shared culture. Everyone is coming in with their, with their own biases and experiences, but in order for the team to be successful, creating that shared culture early on is important. And the best way to start is with the values of your project. So for instance, in the uh, work that we're doing with uh, Martine, 
uh, around the Collabathon. The shared values are a desire to have a deep impact on uh, climate change, um, a positive impact. Um, and so starting there and then figuring out where you connect on other things and creating that environment that makes people feel like they're working with people they like. Um, I cannot stress this enough. Um, and then professional experience, lots of people have different working methodologies. This will be affected by age, region, and, um, and practice, practice uh, area that they, that they are skilled in, as well as, as well as what methodology they subscribe to. Some people that subscribe to Scrum are not really happy working with Kanban. Some people Kanban, not so much Scrum. Uh, some people with agile, you know, think that Scrum is the devil. <laughs> you know, it will. The, you will bring people together with a variety of experiences, and generally, whatever is being taught in terms of strict methodologies is not was what is being applied in tech companies and workforces. There is some um, there is some homogeneousness in Silicon Valley uh, more than I've experienced other places, but most workplaces. Um, most entrepreneurial environments will use a variety of methodologies to get the job done. And that's really the, the overriding principle of Agile. Um, so communication style, meeting people where they are. Um, one of the things about my organization is that we are by our charter an inclusive organization. All of our projects must be inclusive. We must constantly work to create an inclusive environment. Um, it's our number one guiding principle that we're building tools for citizens and, and to help government serve their citizens better. So it's really crucial that we create that. And that means figuring out what communication styles work. So for instance, Scrum has a, has a tool called Stand Up. Um, and that's pretty widely used in Silicon Valley and, uh, and companies across the globe. Um, but it totally excludes people who are neuroatypical. Um, so stand-up is very difficult for those people who experience social anxiety. Um, I am one of those people. Um, or people who are, if you, if you know these people, they're people who like to read everything before participating in a discussion. Um, so having a environment that is a rapid fire, um, quick download of what everybody's doing, it's just noise to them. They're not actually participating in that environment and they start to become excluded. Um, so I favor a scrumbon approach, um, which basically allows for both documentation and uh, stand-up. Uh, so you come and and then also other other styles that include more documentation that that bring everybody into the fold. So that while it may seem on the surface that we're all processing simultaneously, we're all really processing at our at our uh, own pace. And then motivation, finding out what people need to get out of the projects. Um, I cannot stress this enough uh, that whenever um, we have not spent enough time on finding what people's motivation and it's specifically what they want, um, the projects do not go as well. So we now have a very comprehensive onboarding process um, where we find out exactly what people are looking to get for their careers before we even um, have them work on any code at all uh, or join teams in a design capacity or project management. And having that, having that point of view uh, really helps us to um, help choose the work, help them choose the work that they do to focus on the area that is going to be of the biggest value. That's how we pay them. So um, the challenge was when I started was leadership and project owners were having trouble recruiting and onboarding people, were maintaining momentum and retaining volunteers. So I instituted a CICD process, which was to study one project that was going very well, and then to document it, test it, review that, iterate, replicate, and celebrate. Uh, so the first step, studying success. I chose one project, uh, HelloGov, which was um, uh, a outreach application for people, for, age, for nonprofit agencies to connect people with their, with their government representatives. Um, and they had a methodology called um, uh, Kanban. So, um, so then we decided to um, then we decided to pick a project to test this on. So this was the web, the relaunch of the of the organization's website. So we created a Kanban board and milestones. We added new issues and edited old ones. We added labels, tied each issue to the milestone, moved all the relevant issues to the board. 
Um, we recruited at these two events, West Side and downtown Los Angeles. And then this was our Kanban board and we did this recruitment pitch. And we had a very short timeline of a month to get the site relaunched. Um, and we were able to successfully recruit people in a way that we had never been able to recruit people before. Meaning we told people about the project before, but people really weren't interested. And the only thing that had changed was that we were clear about what we wanted people to do because we had put it on the board. So we knew exactly what we were asking people to do. Um, and so the next step is develop, on, getting developers to, um, to meet the issues. We brought all the developers in and introduced them to the Kanban board and explained how it worked. Uh, briefly, I'll go over this. So we have an ice box, which is where we put things that uh, are gonna get worked on in the future. They're placeholders, they're not ready to work now. Think of it as a frozen piece of salmon in your freezer. Um, prioritized backlog is things that are ready to work. There's no questions that need to be resolved and they could even be research issues, but they're still, they're still ready to work. Some, this is a task that someone can take. And then in progress is something someone is actually working. It's a, they've self-assigned this and then done is the completed. Um, so then the other thing was onboarding new people. Because of the volunteer environment, we don't have the luxury of doing onboarding of five or six team members or eight team members or even larger teams um, and then assuming that they will stay. We have to make sure that our onboarding tactics match the fact that volunteers may come and go and they're not making a specific commitment of time. So we have a junior new junior dev is the person who was new last week and they are now giving the onboarding to the newbie. Ben, how am I doing on time? Sorry. Oops. We're running a little short on it. So if, uh, we can wrap up and move to the next thing when, when you're ready. I will, thank you. Um, so, so momentum consulting the board, um, okay. So basically this was very successful. We achieved the project in two weeks instead of a month. Um, and we iterated, I'm gonna skip through a bunch of these things. So, so now the question is how resilient is this model in a remote world? Because these were in, these were in, person, um, these were in person volunteers. So now the entire organization, when I first started, we had four projects. We now have 18 live project teams with 110 volunteers and all of them have moved online. Those that have embraced the Kanban model uh, for moving projects forward through the work in progress um, have been very successful and have actually increased the size of their teams and doubled their productivity. Um, what it requires is a constant tending by the project manager or product owner. And the opportunities that it presents is now we have remote workers, people from all over the country are being drawn to our projects. We don't yet have people in other time zones um, other than the US time zones, but, um, but we are looking to expand uh, some of our new projects to uh, global uh, volunteer participation. That's it. Great, well, thank you so much, Bonnie. Um, I know that we're, we've got about 15 minutes left with this, with this full group, and I do want to take some time to put you all into to breakout rooms to try to implement some of the, these, uh, these principles. So um, I've just shared a link in the chat. So if, you, if, you, if you're new to Zoom or you, you don't know all the features, if you go to the bottom of your screen, go over chat, or maybe you'll see something blinking, um, go to that link. And there's a mural board there with some, some questions to, to chat about. Um, so make sure you click that and have that open in a separate screen because I'm not sure you're going to be able to see the chat when you go into breakout rooms. So I'll give you a moment to, to go and click that and um, you should all have access to it. I, I had Amy who's been, been valiantly working behind the scenes to make this event run. Um, there's going to be one whiteboard. So think of that like our, our class whiteboard with some guiding questions. Uh, what are some complex challenges that you care about personally? How have those challenges been affected by COVID-19, whether they're inherently health related or, or not? How do you personally plan to take action? And how could you work with others in your, your breakout group? So Bonnie mentioned kind of coming at, from a shared base and a shared understanding of a certain challenge. Um, this exercise is just a really short way to, to start to get at that. Um, so we don't expect you to come out of this, you know, with this being a team that you'll work with going forward, but we want you to understand you know, what, what is that process of, of seeing 
where you have some shared interests and some shared goals. I see a lot of your, your cursors moving around. Feel free to play around with the whiteboard, have a little fun with it, keep things clean though. This is the, the whiteboard that, that everybody uh, can see. Um, so feel free to add some things that are coming up in your breakout rooms and we'll get together in about seven or eight minutes and, and see what you all came up with. So Amy, can you uh, send everyone into their breakout groups? You should all have a screen that says join breakout.
All right. I apologize if by uh, if by pulling you back in here, we ended any fascinating conversations early. Um, but I did want to have a, a little bit of time to wrap up and reconvene as a full group. And I wanted to end pretty close to on time because I know even though we're, we're remote, it's easy for that to, to bleed into other parts of your schedules. But I, I want to stay as, as close to our, our scheduled time as possible. Uh, I was following that, that mural here. Uh, it's really uh, fun to see all of the, the, uh, the different comments coming up and the different things coming up. Uh, as we wrap up here, I would love if, if those of you who are participating could just put some thoughts in the chat, which I'll, um, I'll synthesize. So, you know, how was that experience? Uh, what was it like to use the mural? What was it like being with a random group? And as you're doing that, um, panelists, it'd be great if to get your comments on, on what, what the experience of kind of breaking up into random groups was, was like, and do you have any reflections on your, your experience? Maybe start with Diedrich. Sure. Um, yeah, we definitely didn't do the task 100%, uh, but we, we started just talking about what we care about and that led us to just uh, continue talking about how that sort of is affected by the crisis, obviously. But uh, I think you should have you should have had this 60 second uh, breakout room closing instead of 12, 15 seconds because <laughs> it was a really fun conversation. And um, yeah, so my takeaway, very nice, cool people, uh, too short time. <laughs> I know. I'm. I'm sorry to, to cut things so short. Uh, Bonnie, what were your thoughts? Oh, um, I was going to say that um, it was really fascinating uh, meeting Bashar and um, uh, and 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 getting to talk to you, Ben. Uh, I think that um, Bashar expressed it best when he talked about um, that in order to have a shared culture, we have to create trust. Um, and how do we do that in an online world um, when you don't have the, the, the human in-person connection? I thought that was really interesting. Hmm. Martin, any, any takeaways? And others, please feel free to use the chat function to share thoughts you may have as well. Um, it, was, um, it was fascinating to, to start trying the, the mural. I, I, I've, I've been looking forward to play around with it. And I was in the breakout session with Kago um, and I, fortunately, Kiko was having a hard time connecting to um, the mural, so um, I was mostly playing around and telling him what I was working on. <laughs> um, but um, but I think being able to, you know, if we'd be in a in a session where we have to put in a lot of sticky notes, if anyone's been in my office at Yale, uh, everyone knows that that soon it just gets just packed with sticky notes. Um, being able to see this virtually is 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 great. Um, just because it just helps reordering things fast. And I could see that everyone had different strategies on how to put out some ideas. So obviously, I think there were a lot of different teams working on the same whiteboard. Um, but if it'd be just one team, then it'd be easier to, to define like what's the, what's the approach and how do we structure our, our workflow through stickies and ideas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm seeing some some technical issues coming up, which I think goes with this territory that we're talking about when you're using digital platforms. It's not quite as seamless as having everyone in the room in the room together. And also just, you know, some you know, in times where we're all isolated physically from one from one another, for the most part, just having the chance to engage with new people can be can be really fascinating and and can open up uh, all sorts of, of new worlds and, and possibilities. And uh, definitely it seemed like some folks wanted to have a little bit more time to, to sort that out. Um, so I'm going to move us towards wrapping up here. Um, uh, I will sh I'll share the link again to the mural to everyone who registered just to see kind of what things were, were going on and maybe those of you who are having difficulty accessing, accessing it, we'll, we'll get another chance to, to try to, to take a look. Um, I can also share um, some of the, the, the slide decks of the panelists if they're, if they're willing to share those with me as well as links to follow up with some of their, their initiatives. So panelists, I'll reach out to you just to make sure to get that. And if you're willing to share your emails, I think a lot of the participants would, would enjoy that as well. But just before we, we close out the meeting, any, any final words from any of the, the panelists that you'd like to share with the group? I think uh, one thing I, I want to say is like, uh, we're talking always about the, the problems with working remotely. Um, it's important to focus on the positive things because we can literally solve any problem uh, by working remotely. And soon, we are is coming, and we are will you know 
help us create products that are physical together from different places on earth and feel more close in uh, that. So things are getting better for remote work. <laughs> Great. Well, I think those are really optimistic words to end on. Thank you everyone for joining. Thank you for, for your patience and your, your willingness to, uh, to play on the, on the mural and to, to split out into, into the breakouts with one another. Um, and I will send out a follow-up to everyone who's registered with, with some of those um, um, other resources and, and ways to, to get back in touch with the, the panelists and, the, uh, and others. So, so take care, everyone. Have a good rest of your, your afternoon. And thanks again for joining. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Great connecting.